Yeah. yeah there because are. the twin method in itself, I mean, diagnosing monopsychosity is no problem at all. But uh, you could tell me a bit about your methods. I know about them, but I would like yeah. to. Well, of course, we're using basically the uh, same design. We search for identical. We're also searching for fraternal twins root apart as well. Mm -hmm. And we di diagnose them using uh, standard uh, genetic techniques for uh, blood markers. Uh, one of the, uh, I've, I've always been cautious about psychological tests. I've always thought they were, uh, were interesting and useful and a valuable contribution from psychology. Uh, but I was always cautious about them, always feeling that there was a larger range of error mm -hmm. than uh, was uh, desirable. But now we've studied uh, 20, 21 sets of identical twins, and we have uh, oh a good number of cases who have virtually identical profiles on some of our psychological tests. And this evidence has uh, persuaded me that our tests in many instances are even better than we thought they were. Uh, in fact, I can't think of more convincing evidence than seeing two identical twins reared apart come in, take a test, and get very, very similar scores. It's quite striking. Mm -hmm. And uh, that data, while it's preliminary, of course, we hope to gather many more twins, uh, is pointing to the conclusion that uh, twins reared together in the same family are as similar as they are primarily for genetic reasons, but not for reasons of environment. Our environment. Uh, I noticed when I told you that a few days ago, you, uh, you were not a bit surprised. No, no. Because, first of all, uh, I had a few cases demonstrating that, and our colleague, which we should mention, uh, James Shields in London, he found the, the very same thing, that in some of his separated cases, uh, the twins were more similar in certain respects, personality traits, than, um, than those who had been brought up um, together. And I think a, a very simple explanation, which you know, of course, is that, that one could assume that being psychologically a monopsychotic twin is a, is a special situation, and it will develop, uh, it, it will um, result in a division in roles, one being the more dominant partner, the other one the most submissive partner, and so on. In personality, they will, they will, try, to, they will try to maintain their own personal their identity, and, and in, in this way, they will uh, tend to become different. Whereas if you are alone, uh, like most of us are, in an environment, you may mm, uh, perhaps follow a course. At least you do not have this problem of having your double next to you. Yeah, there's a, there's a feature of the environment that's not there influencing you, mm -hmm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. Is this what uh, Zazo calls the couple effect? Yes. Yeah, I think yes. uh, I think yes. that's technically about the same sort yes. of thing as he calls the couple effect. Uh, this kind of finding, though, it seems to me, threatens uh, a great deal of uh, psychological theory. There's a lot of theorizing in psychology about <coughs> the tremendous importance of the within family situation, mm -hmm. the peculiar things that happen when you're growing up, mm -hmm. and we turn around and we look at these twins that are reared in entirely different families. Yes. And they're just as similar as twins reared in the same family. Yes. Uh, I, I've looked at the data. I'm collecting the data, and I'm still absolutely astounded. I, uh, I still haven't settled down and absorbed mm. this kind of a finding yet. How long is it going to take me? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> but so far, I think you've done extremely well. And I'm very much impressed by the uh, investigations you're doing here. Um, of course, you have the advantage that now you have very competent co-workers and you have uh, a lot of uh, possibilities for doing almost yeah. everything. And um, that may refine the 
the findings. The, the, yes, yeah. the findings. We do have, you, you had, uh, there's one feature of your study that made it such a fine study, and that is you had an almost exhaustive uh, population. You searched records, and you probably turned up almost every set of twins reared apart in Denmark. So you, yes. you didn't have a bias in the twins no. who came to your study. No. We're plagued with the problem of recruiting in a wide variety of different ways. Yes. And uh, I think people, as, as you pointed out to me, people will probably say, oh, you have these striking findings because yes. only similar twins come to you. Would you comment on that? Yes. I think uh, Shields in, in London with his uh, series had the same problem yeah. because they were, uh, the start there was a BBC uh, program where they uh, they um, wanted to to they asked monozygotic twins to come forward and um, uh, because of course that's theoretically an objection because many people will say that they're similar they're strikingly similar and that's the reason why they come to you and they they find it interesting that fascinating that they are so similar um well i don't think that's a serious uh problem because not not with regard to the differences because the the differences are still the most important important, important things to, yes. to find out and and also you'll find results or, or you will notice uh, things that cannot be uh, directly influenced by this consciousness about being uh, monozygotic twins. Of course, you could consider the possibility, and I know you're doing that, of investigating dizygotic twins. Which, uh, yeah, we're which hoping there'll way. be a... a, a partial control on that that well, kind of a selective bias that, yeah. that certainly well another thing of course would would be to compare it with uh, non-twins in, in some way a material you you may need a uh, control material of some kind to counteract uh, to counter yeah uh, well we've been thinking of uh, creating control groups selected from our own sample uh, we would for example match uh, individuals of the same age, of the same sex, and perhaps of the same yes. social class within our sample and see how similar they are and contrast that with our twins. That and of course, we're, we're studying spouses whenever possible. Yes. And so they have about the same age and the same social background. So we have a large population of individuals that we can yes. select from. Uh, but there are some inherent limitations. It's certainly not a perfect experiment, as no experiment is. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we find, uh, we haven't found any classically mentally ill uh, twins, but we found a lot of uh, sort of modest psychiatric symptoms in many of our twins. Yes. Uh, <coughs> what were your findings with respect well, to that? It was about the same. Um, several cases you've, you found uh, at least neurotic symptoms and... Oh, yes. and, and clear-cut neurosis and uh, character or personality disorders and perhaps that should be stressed that the picture there was generally one of, of striking similarity yeah. which of course is uh, not that surprising uh, to me but maybe other people would, would find that very Well, I think there's been a general belief that perhaps the more serious uh, psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the depressions uh, might have a strong genetic base. But I think most people have felt that the neuroses, for example, are predominantly well, environmental yes. within yes. family well, kind that, of a That's been thing. the general attitude. But our, our data would, as it stands now, clearly contradicts that. Your, yes. your findings were the same. About the same, yes, and, and, and the Shields data were also we're in we're that also, direction. Yeah, um, so that, that's one important thing. Yeah. Um, we, if I should try to say very briefly, and I think you'll agree with that, if we put it in this way, 
in in which respects were the twins strikingly similar, obviously similar, and where did they differ strikingly? I could summarize my findings very briefly. I would like to have you comment on that. Go ahead, you summarize and I'll comment. Um, first of all, they looked alike. Oh boy. That, that's, that's, that <laughs> no sounds question. silly. But, but uh, actually, your physical appearance and your hair, hair color and your eye, eye color, color yeah. your face. The way you smile, yeah. The way you walk, the way you talk, the, the voice. All these mannerisms, uh, they were strikingly alike. And uh, if, for instance, I talked to the twins on the phone, I could make sh take them easily. If I saw them from behind, again, confusing. I think this I mentioned to you uh, that we had the case with uh, Jim Springer and Jim Lewis. They had the, our first set of twins. They came mm -hmm. here and we videotaped them. And because they were in our, our first twins, we hadn't really completed the assessment that we would like to have had. Mm -hmm. So we brought them back six months later. And I recall playing a videotape. They asked to put the tape on. And I put the videotape on and I said, I don't know which twin is on this tape. Mm -hmm. And the voice came on and uh, Jim Lewis said, oh, that's me. Yes. And the picture came on and it was his brother. So yes. as a demonstration of similarity in voice, that, uh, that was perfect. Yes, but generally, if you, you have that in a family, many psychologists will, will, will say, well, that's easy to explain because they are identifying with each other or Modeling. they are uh, imitating or yeah. consciously or unconsciously. And you can see that in, in, in families, a boy uh, uh, developing in the same way as his father did and so on. But these studies, yours and mine, and, and the Newman studies and Shield studies, demonstrate clearly that such hypotheses are not at all necessary because you see the same with persons who have never met, don't know about each other, don't know about mm. the family. So to begin with, that, that, that's very important, this um, behavior, and, and that's, that's part of your personality. That's part of the uh, impression you, you uh, the impression the environment will have of you. So it will influence the environment to some degree. And if you go deeper into it, and, and as you're doing, investigating the brain uh, activity. Brain waves, oh yes. Yes, the EEGs e and the ECG yeah. and and many other things, you you'll find that they are as similar as as the same investigation done twice on the same person, and then of course at a certain point you you'll find differences. The differences will begin to to appear, but uh, uh, then as you. Uh, stated, what is the difference? Is it a difference w if you have an IQ difference, say five points? Is that a difference? Yeah, well, still within the standard error of measurement of the instrument. Right, yeah. yes, so it's not a difference. Yeah, well, so we have many cases where for all practical purposes there really is no difference. No difference. Yeah. In fact, we do have uh, uh, two sets of twins that are within a point, I believe, right now. Yes. Oh, remarkably similar. Yeah. So, uh, perhaps what is needed are environments that differ more than environments do in general. I think Sir Francis Bacon, who, who was the, f the first one to... Oh, you mean Galton? Oh, sorry, Galton. Yeah, no, yeah. Not, not Bacon, Bacon no, Galton. Yeah. As a Francis Galton, he um, he said something that um, he said something like, "Nature prevails enormously over nurture within the same rank, of provided that you're studying uh, twins within the same rank of 
of society. Of society. Yeah. Yeah. So what he meant was actually that if you have differences that are unusual from one home to another, then there may be the possibility that such factors will create a difference. Yeah. But within what is uh, ubiquitous, what's that, everywhere in the society? Yeah, things are equi equally distributed yes, across the yes. society. Yeah. There may not be... Yeah, one of the consequences that I, I point out to my classes and that don't seem to sort of get into the public uh, consciousness is that as we create uh, more and more egalitarian and equal societies with equal opportunity, uh, the differences <coughs> between individuals become more and more genetically based. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the differences don't go away. The overall range may be reduced somewhat, but the differences don't go away mm -hmm. and they become more and more genetic, which is a sort of a paradoxical uh, yes. finding if, if you're an environmentalist. If you believe that there are genetic differences, it's a natural consequence.